Hello everyone, and today we're going to be talking about the inner ear, where all the magic happens in part 3 of videos about the anatomy of the ear. So, the inner ear is situated in the petrous part of the temporal bone, medially to the middle ear, and laterally to the internal acoustic meatus. Now the inner ear is divided into two, an outer bony part which contains cavities within it and an inner membranous part which contains ducts and sacs. We will start with the outer bony part. So this is the bony part. In the center, this structure is called the vestibule, and we have the cochlea in the anterior part, and posteriorly, we have three semicircular canals. This is the anterior, the posterior, and the lateral one. Now these are the cavities within the bony part and let's see the contents. It has a fluid called perilymph which is a fluid have a high concentration of sodium and it's directly connected with the CSF to this structure which is called the vestibular aqueduct and then we have the membranous part swimming in this fluid in the perilymph Now let's talk about the membranous part. So this is the membranous part, contains ducts and sacs. So these three are the semicircular ducts, the anterior, the posterior, and the lateral one. And at the end of them, there is three dilatations called the ampulla. And then we have two other sacs, one of them is called the utricle, and the other one is the saccio, and they are connected with the utricle saccular ducts. And then we have here, these are, this is the cochlear duct. And then also we have endolymphatic duct and endolymphatic sac which is a closed sac it's not connected to the CSF now the utricle the saccule and the ampulla are the organs of balance contains the organ of balance and the cochlear duct contains the organ of hearing And the membranous part contains the endolymph, contains a fluid called endolymph. And this fluid, uh, it's for regulation of the electrochemical impulses of the hair cells. This is the function. And it contains a huge amount of potassium. Now we want to talk about hearing, the process of hearing. It all occurs inside the cochlea. So this is the cochlea. Now the cochlear duct from the membranous part separates the cavity into three parts. The scala vestibuli, 
which is continuous with the vestibule and con it contains perilymph of course and the scarlet tympani which is separated from the tympanic cavity by the round window. Now the round window contains something called secondary tympanic membrane, which the where the sound exits from the cochlea to the outside. And then the balance happens with the stachian tube. This is the oval window which is attached to the stapes and is for transmission of vibrations to the inner ear from the middle ear. So the cochlea now has three openings. One of them is for the cochlear duct or called scala media and one of them scala vestibuli and scala tympani. So if we see the cochlea and have a cut tool like this, these are the three openings. This is scala tympani. This is the cochlear duct or scala media and scala vestibuli. Now we have other structures. This is the cochlear nerve. And this is called the basilar membrane. And the other membrane is the vestibular membrane between the cochlear duct and the vestibule and the scala vestibular. Now on the top of the cochlea there is something called helicotrema which is a duct between the two scala, the scala vestibuli and tympani. And here is, this is the spiral ligament, called the spiral ligament. And the central part of the cochlea, the bone, is called the medialis bone. And the outer part is the cochlea, the bone. Now let's zoom in a little bit. In this part, here is the cochlear nerve. Here is the two scala, media, uh, sorry, vestibuli and tympani, which are containing perilymph, of course, and this is the cochlear duct, which contains endolymph. This is the tectorial, something called tectorial membrane, which is connected with the hair cells. They are in touch the hair cells or the organ of corti, the organ of hearing. This is the spiral ligament and these capillary loops are called stria vascularis. And stria vascularis are just capillary loops in the upper part of the spiral ligament and in the outer part of the cochlear duct. And the functions, the function, sorry, of these capillary loops is for producing the endolymph. This is the basilar membrane and the vestibular membrane. Now let's zoom in again inside the hair cells. Here's the hair cells. This is the basilar membrane and this is the tectorial membrane in green. Now when vibrations come in, there will be a movement in the basilar membrane followed by movement in the tectorial membrane. Now the stereocilia, these are called the stereocilia of the hair cells will be rubbed against the tectorial membrane. And there is a huge amount of potassium in the endolymph and there is a big membrane potential difference between the endolymph, the fluid, the endolymph and the hair cells. This is the largest membrane potential difference. So there will be an opening in potassium channels when there will be a move when there is movement of the stereocilia the potassium will go in and cause action potential.
reduction potential will stimulate vesicles containing neurotransmitters and the neurotransmitters will go to the cochlear nerve and this is how hearing occurs. So this is about hearing and in the other part we have the balance. Now the organs of balance are situated in the ampulla. We have something called the crista of the ampulla. I'm going to see it right now. Now if there is a movement in the head, if the head is moving, your head is moving, then there will be a movement in the fluids in the semicircular ducts. We'll see how that works. So how much the fluid is moving and how quickly will determine deter is determined by the strength of the rotation or the head movement. So this is the ampulla and this is the endolin and this organ is called the copula. This is the stereocilia of the hair cells and these are the hair cells. And it's connected with the vestibular nerve. Now, when there is a movement in this fluid, it will move the copula. And the copula will move the stereocilia of the hair cells and the potassium will go inside the hair cells and will cause an action potential and then an impulses to the vestibular nerve. If you move your head for yes movement, there will be a change in the fluid of the anterior semicircular duct. If you, if you do a no movement of the head, there will be a change in the lateral semicircular duct. And if you move your head towards the shoulder, there will be a movement in the fluid of the posterior semicircular duct. And also we have an organ of balance inside the utricle and the saccule. Now these two sacs are called the otolithic organs and they are responsible for detecting head movement in relation to gravity. The utricle is for vertical acceleration and the saccule for linear acceleration. Now let's zoom in. Inside these two is something called the macula. So this is the macula. These are the hair cells and the stereocilia. And this is the vestibular nerve. This is called the autolytic membrane, which contains gel-like substance. And on top of that membrane there is the otolith which are heavy structures on top of the autolytic membrane and when these autolytic or autolith moves in relation to gravity it will move the autolytic membrane leading into movement of the stereocilia of the hair cells and action potential these autolith are calcium carbonate A calcium carbonate crystals. So this is your position. This is the position of the head. And if you lie down, this is the movement of the autolith and the movement of the autolithic membrane. And this is the action potential on the hair cells and it's detectable through the vestibular nerve to the brain. So this is all about hearing unbalance in part 3. Thanks everyone and have a nice day.